G'day and welcome to the crossover. I am at NBAG with Matty G and this is at SC underscore Matrix Matrix for the crossover. How you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm in my element. I just worked out that I'm not here next week too for the crossover. I'm going away with oh, the no. boys for a uh, for a Super Bowl weekend. Oh, uh, with this the, is the uh, annual with Super the, Bowl weekend. Yeah, with the with the uh, NFL fantasy boys. So um, obviously, I play all fantasies. So um, yeah, uh, I come away with the L this like, year. It's like basically schoolies for fantasy football fans for you guys, isn't it? Yeah, and like whoever wins gets like the master bedroom wherever we're staying, and whoever loses has to get everybody drinks and everything. It's it's really adult. It's. I would like to see like a lot of streams and messages about that. I'll try and call you in. I'll go solo on the crossover next week, but I'll call you in and see how drunk you are in the lead up to the Super Bowl weekend. And in the lead up to your week 16, there is no greater time than to get your schedule sorted, get all of your NBA news and injury updates. Week 16, in the immortal words of someone back in the 1920s, it's a fucking humdinger. And we'll tell you all about it after this. Welcome to the ultimate super coach and fantasy sports show. You are now listening to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast. Did you like the humdinger, Matty? Humdinger is a good word? I liked it. Mate, uh, injuries, and you're a, because you're such a professional athlete and basketball historian, you know about injuries in basketball. Big injury news this week with Zach Levine being out for the rest of the season. Four to six months with foot surgery. Clutch Sports have basically said, nope, pulling the pin on it. Do you think this is partly because of him being traded and them exacerbating, not exacerbating it, but just taking their like, look, let's get everything done. You're not going anywhere. But he's obviously hurt. I I think he's probably always been hurt and they were still trying to move him. Um, could have been a bit of sleight of hand there, but Look, I suppose the moral of the story is, sorry for owners, uh, Zach Levine won't be playing no. this year. Yeah, he is absolutely out. So, Maddie, I guess what we can pretty much say is this, that if you do have Zach Levine, all you need to do is look at the Chicago Bulls as they are currently constructed, and that's what they're going to be rolling out there. I think the only person to really worry about extra minutes who's not in the rotation currently is Patrick Williams, who is currently out injured. So I guess Patty Williams is the only one, but obviously – Alex Caruso and Ayo Desumu have been the guys who are starting and who are doing the job in Chicago. And the status quo will continue. And they haven't and, and obviously Kobe White has grabbed a massive bump this season with Zach Levine being down. How about this? The salary cap Ooh. in the NBA is $136 yep. million. With Lonzo and Zach Levine out, that is $61 million of your $136 million out injured for the season, for the four seasons. And, and at the end of this season, DeMar DeRozan comes off the books and he is an unrestricted free agent as well. Uh, but they did get that money reimbursed, reimbursed to them for Lonzo Ball, I think, believe this year. Like uh, they did get that penalty and they they did apply for that one and they got that back. But still, did they have get that like money a mid level out. or something? Yeah. Yeah, they got like a, some exception for him coming back this year. But still, when you're talking about the injuries, ugh, they're piling up in the NBA left, right, and center this year. So that's what we can tack fantasy-wise. But, yeah, Paddy Williams has been the only guy who hasn't been playing, I guess you could say, like recently. Yep. Do you ex- you don't you expect everyone in their starting five and those who are getting a bump to have the bump that they've currently got? When Patrick Williams yeah, comes back, he'll get some change. minutes. And things don't change. Things don't change. This is pretty much what it's been for the last two weeks. If you want a sample size and if you wonder what's going to happen, just bring up the box scores for the last two weeks because that is as it is. However, the big news this week is that Joel Embiid, the big fella, is going to be out for a significant amount of time. The uh, injury around that was just – Shams was saying it was one thing, then Woj was saying it was another thing, then he was out. Uh, obviously, who, where are you going to lean if you're the 76ers to get some more return and value? Well, I wonder if – like, obviously, the short term is Paul Reid. Um, every yep. time Joel Embiid's been out, Paul Reed's been a stream. But I don't know. They're going to have to reinvent themselves because I'm not sure, you know, 32 minutes of Paul Reed is the answer to Philadelphia, you know, making a playoff run. I'm not sure what Mo they're going to do. 
is it Mobamba down yeah. the stretch? He's been getting some extra run. So and and played 20 minutes today or 18 minutes or something, which I like. Um yep. I, I honestly I'm more leaning towards I think that they might maybe Batum and Tobias Harris and they just play like this massive small ball. Marcus Morris Senior plays center. Um, maybe they just go massive small ball and play Paul Reed on on matchups or Bumba on matchups or something like that. I expect maybe a bump from one of those quote unquote power forwards. Um, maybe they're sliding across because like Batum six eight. Um, yep. What's Paul Reed's only six nine. Marcus Morris Senior's six eight. Um, maybe they just play their best players out on the floor. And as a plug-in when Embiid's out for two games, Paul Reed's perfectly serviceable. But I do wonder whether Philly will look elsewhere now that it's looking like a long-term injury. What is it? Um, Lateral menin- meniscus, right? Yeah, so it's a displaced flap in the meniscus, which is uh, it's probably the dirtiest sounding injury you could probably get having a displaced flap, to be fair. Um, so it's going to be a substantial amount of time. You've also got the one guy, and I've got to play this one just because I know Skitty's going to listen to it. This is uh, for Jake Skidmore. Kelly Oubre obviously gets a bump as well because they do need some more offensive firepower if your name is not Tyrese Maxey. So I guess of all those bigger options, like you said, for some small ball lineups, some more offensive impetus would probably fall on the shoulders of, of Tsunami Papi in this situation. But yeah, look, he's out probably for an extended four to six weeks until we see him as well. So there is going to be a bunch of time that we're not going to have Joel Embiid. And this is where the whole 65 game limit it really applies. He was having... Look, an incredible season, to be fair. Like, an incredible season. An MVP. MVP MVP Mm -hmm. caliber season. And it derails that one. And I guess this falls into the whole conversation as well with guys like, on a minutes limit and restriction to fight for his contract at this point in time, is guys like Tyrese Halliburton, which I think has been one of the biggest debates happening around. And you know what? Indiana, three games this week. But how often do you think we're going to see Tyrese Maxey in the lineups? I don't know. It's hard to look into my crystal ball and work it out. Um, I'll just be following and, you know, watching those game time decisions. I've got Woj, I've got Shams, I've got um, everybody on Twitter uh, giving me the updates. But I think there's going to be a whole lot of game time decisions here for Tyrese Halliburton because I think that he'll play even though he's not right if Indiana staff let him. I think he will. And we've just got to have a look at the minutes there. They've been smacked by injuries a little bit themselves lately. Like it's all about his injury management now. So I know that the organization, they want to play him, but it's just, it's odd. The whole restriction is a little bit odd to be fair, but I think they've got to get him over the line for whatever reason is, but he does get into that super max territory that he's looking for his contract. Miles Turner has been out. Jalen Smith and Benedict Mather and all for those guys been out. We'll update more on them for injury wise, but Look, it's been a little bit concerning, the injuries that have gone around the NBA lately. And it's we're going to get to that a little bit later on. But, Maddie, it's just a shame to see. But fantasy-wise, this is where you need to be, I guess, agile in your own teams when you're getting this news coming for whoever, especially your role players. So anyone probably from like 90 to 110 in your lineups, if they're going to be out for a week or two, this is the time where you need to have a look at them and, and start probably streaming like crazy to make sure you make the playoffs. Yeah, you do. Um, 90 to 110, it's hard, I suppose. It depends if you go 140 deep, like standard formats. Yeah. But, yeah, look, there's some there's some really good stream options. Um, this is actually a really good week for streaming. Um, like it you is. can get people on back-to-back. Um, there's like six and seven games at certain times. Um, there's no like massive, you know, 14 game slates. I know Saturday's got 11, but this is a ripper week for streaming. There's some good back to backs that we're going to target. Um, yeah, let's get into that rip- then. Let's get. Yeah, let's just. Yeah, do it. let's get. Let's let's get into the weekly preview. He is heating up. Did you like that? I changed. I changed game preview to weekly preview just for this show, Maddie. It's a whole new thing. Oh, it's a whole new graphic. I, I'm excited. I just changed the word for it. Look, I've, let's let's also lead it with this one for it. If we're going to talk about it, Manny, take us through. You did say that we did have the streams for the week. This is the week 16 game slate. Yeah, look, Monday 6, Tuesday 7, Wednesday 7. 
Um, Thursday's a bit bigger at nine, I suppose. Six on Friday, 11 on Saturday, and two on the Sunday. Even just as an NBA fan, this is great. Like, it becomes a bit more manageable when there's six games on a day than when there's, like, 12 or 13 because you can't even watch the highlights on 12 or 13 games. Um, But when there's six or seven, um, you know, you can pick your favourites, watch them, have plenty of time to watch the highlights. Um, Sensational week for NBA. It really is. And if you look at it as well, the games that are dark green, they're the ones you can stream the most. So obviously Monday, Friday, and Sunday are our really core games to target for the week. We've got back-to-backs there for seven games on Tuesday and Wednesday. It's good to stream there, but if you've got a couple of blokes in the same team in your team, if you've got a little bit, couple of mini stacks, that does damage you a little bit on the seven. It is harder. It's a bit harder to do. That's why you've got the orange there on the nine. And it can be really tough, like you said, Maddie, when you've got 11 games on a Saturday to be able to get any more games in on that one. And I think the big news is we've got to look in for the back-to-backs for the week. And what happens with four games for the week uh, is Atlanta, Brooklyn, Charlotte, Cleveland, Dallas, the Golden State Warriors, the Pels, the 76ers, the Sacramento Kings, and the Toronto Raptors. Who's got three games? Well, I might go a bit out on a limb and gloss over the three games because everybody plays. Everybody else plays the three games except for Denver, Minnesota, Portland, and Utah only play two games. So if anybody, you're going to stay away from Denver, Minnesota, Portland, and Utah. Of course, all all those guys that you mentioned, the four games are excellent targets, and everybody else is just mid where they should be. So Exactly, and – Interesting notes then, some key schedule notes with those like ones, like you said, Matty, is that both Minnesota and Utah wrap their weeks by Thursday. So, so they're done by Thursday. So let's say you bring in Kelly Olynyk and Kyle Anderson into your team, any of those kind of guys. Uh, you can drop them and pivot elsewhere for Friday through Sunday, however you see fit. So you can bring them in where you need them, get rid of them and dump them. And obviously Sunday is only a minimum game schedule because of the Super Bowl, which you'll be very, very intoxicated for. Oh yeah, n- like that's nine. That's nine. Drinks package starts at nine o'clock in the morning um, oh, that's over here in Australia. Um, yeah, so that goes until like one o'clock. Uh, we're going to the Caxton. Uh, if you want to come out and say hello, legendary Brisbane hotel. The Caxton. legendary. Um, so you're doing it Brizzy this year, not the Gold Coast. Yeah, yeah, we've done Gold Coast the last couple of years, but we're doing Brizzy yeah. this year. We thought we'd uh, we'd change it Rock up. The city. Um, Rock Briz Vegas. Yeah, pretty pretty excited. It's one of <laughs> It's it's one of the best, like Magic Round. Um, Magic Round is probably the pinnacle of my uh, sporting year, uh, followed by Super Bowl weekend. It's pretty good. Mate, um, this is like, obviously it's trade deadline week and we'd be remiss, like, what do you do with a drunken sailor? Pretty much what do you do with your team on trade deadline week? So it is Thursday. And this is the stupidest thing of the week. The second most games that are played in this week on a, a Thursday. And, and that's pretty big for a reason. So there's heaps of teams in there that includes Detroit, uh, the Lakers, your your team, you're repping the jersey right now, the Grizz, the Trailblazers, the Spurs, and the Jazz. All of these teams we're hearing rumors about, they're all on the gossip mill. So the hit list for these guys, Alec Burks, Boyan Bogdanovich, Isaiah Stewart, Rui Hachimura, Mate, do you think the Lakers probably hold him more now with Vando's injury possibly being for the season? Do you think that we see him stay more so now? Yeah, I think I think if the Lakers see a target they want, they'll do it regardless of what they could do. But I think Rui Hachimura does get a little bit of a bump with Vando out. Yeah, 100%. I think Cam Reddish, when he returns, oh, he gets some more bumper there as well. Uh, but look, guys like even Cam Reddish, Marcus Smart, we're hearing rumors that he could be shot from Memphis. We've just seen them. Can I just ask, are you sad that Stephen Adams is no longer a Grizzly? Yeah, actually. Um, I thought that him coming back next year kind of fit our timeline. Um, didn't really make a make a lot of sense, except we're, unless we're just really confident in the way that we draft, I see a few misses, um, you know, with your Kenny Lofton Jr. and your um, maybe Zaya Williams not being as good as I'd sort of hoped um, recently. So I'm not super confident in our um, drafting ability. But, hey, if we're really confident in our drafting ability, you know, going to get a heap of picks um, for Stephen Adams and get him off the books and give us a bit more cap flexibility. Maybe we've got 
other plans. I've just got to believe in the uh, in the system that they're doing the right thing. But yeah, look, I love Stephen Adams, and it would have been great to watch him play a bit more for Memphis. So. You've just got to trust the process, apparently, Matty. That's all, that's all it comes down to, just trusting the process there in Memphis. Oh, uh, yeah, look, these all these guys as well. You've got, like, Jeremy Grants, Malcolm Brogdon's, even your Chetty Osmonds, Trey Joneses, Jordan Clarkson's, Sexton's, Olinix, all of these guys. Now, this is the interesting thing. Some league settings, depending if you are uh, Yahoo, uh, IL+, Plus, if you have that activated in your leagues, in some ESPN leagues, and even fan tracks, if a guy is traded and they can't play, you actually might be able to stash them for the day. So if you do hear your guy is traded and they're not possible, check your settings. Just don't, this is the thing, don't get bummed straight away. Like, oh, fuck, I'm going to miss this game out. Put them in IL for the day, in IL plus, if you do have that option in your league. Get a stream in, don't miss out the game. Just get the best available player you can, <coughs> pull them in and don't miss out on stats. So just make sure you know your league settings, especially in trade week. Because that can save you. If you've got two or three guys who go out and you've got two spots and you don't use it, well, you should. So that's a big tip. Just make sure you're doing that as well. Uh, big trade Trade, targets. trade you can be tra Trades can be great yes. for streaming. Like oh, yeah. suddenly you just – honestly, ESPN depth chart, Google it, and then somebody gets traded. You just look down the depth chart. You work out who you think is going to get the bump. Somebody that gets 12 minutes a game is probably going to go get 34 minutes in the following game until the other pieces Jeez. come across. They've moved over their other pieces. Um, it can be great for streaming. Yeah, it really can be. And there's a, it's a feast or famine for some people in that, but it's also who gets the bumps. It's like the second you jumped on the Dante DiVincenzo train or the Emmanuel Quickly train when they were traded off. These, these guys have been bumped up along the way. Your DiVincenzos of the world then they get an even bigger bump when OG Ananobi goes out. If Julius Randle goes out. Like, you just never know what's going to happen off the back of a trade. So know your depth chart. <laughs> who are you looking at in advance, especially on these teams like we were talking about? Like, who gets the bump then? Well, if Brogleton goes, Shaden Sharp's coming back this week, by the sounds of from his abductus strain. So Shaden Sharp's going to come back into life. So Scoot Henderson becomes more of a play in Portland. So you just have a look around and see what they're going and what pieces are going to fit together and where it all works out at the end of the day. And that's the best you can do. But you do have to pretty much stay locked in and fill in, like, just follow everyone. Just check out every news bleach report open. Just keep on scrolling as it's live trade deadline. You see whatever you can get if you get half a chance. Is there been any big trade wins, or like deadline wins that you've made or moves you've made that come to mind, Matty, in, in your fantasy history? Look, nothing really that springs to mind being completely put on the spot. But um, I actually had a trade loss this year, oh. um, which became a win. I traded Terry Rozier. Oh, I'd agreed to the do. trade. And then the yep. sec and then LaMelo Ball got injured about eight minutes after I did the trade. And then Terry <sighs> Rozier got this massive bump for like weeks and months and everything. So I had a trade loss this year, but... You know what? I got the guy I wanted to get, so it's all good. Look, I've got Mikhail Bridges and OG. I know Maddie Malley and I on Tuesday night. We always think who gets the who gets the best one, and OG's come good, and Mikhail's coming good. So we're like, maybe we both win this one. Maybe maybe we're yeah. the maybe we're the Pacers and the Kings. Who knows? Maybe it's best for everybody involved. Like we don't know what's going to end up being at the end of the day, but we can tell you on the back of all of this that it is a big week to stream, especially with those games. So you want to have a look at that. You want to, especially around those big names like Dejounte Murray or even dudes like Bruce Brown, who's already been a Raptor and who's going to come back out. We're hearing these names, Bojan Bogdanovic in, in Detroit. So does that mean Asar Thompson comes back in and gets some more burn and everyone can and get on with that because oh he was so good at the beginning of the season. Like there's just he the, got 26 minutes last game. Like, I don't he, know what they're doing with him. Exactly. So if he's if if he if Bojan buggy buggers off, oh, let's just look, play him 32, 34, 36 minutes a night. Sure, why not? We've got we've got a rookie. Monty's not coaching very well this season. Let's just give the bloke some minutes. Mm. Like, who knows what's gonna go on? But let's get down to it. Oh, look, let's talk about this one. Let's talk, let's talk about something really huge. Can we just say we've been remiss? This is capping, Maddie. This. Because yeah, if you so, want your, um, Yeah, go for it. Go on. Um, no, I was going to so say, if you want your trade advice, hit it up. Yeah, we've had our Discord open for a, for a little while, um, and it's just been really good for just 
creating discussions. So, you know, you pop in, you're like, hey, I'm in a 12-team, nine-cap league. Um, do you think this is a good trade? And we've got hundreds. Um, I think it's getting close to a 1,000 people, maybe that even a little heat. bit more than that, um, just chatting about the trade. So we decided, you know, to give you a direct line to us and um, and all of the NBA experts like Skitty and and those sort of blokes. Uh, we've decided $25 a year, 50 cents a week, you can support us. Um, you know what? It's like five cups of coffee. Um, and, look, we appreciate the support, and we're going to be showing that by answering all your questions, um, you know, rating your teams. Uh, if you want to ask our advice, it, there you go. If you want to ask our, our advice on some trades, um, yeah, happy to happy to answer it. We're answering those. We found we were answering those questions anyway. Um, it just helps you support the show. Um, you know, we we get to know yous, and um, yeah, yeah, look, Discord Unlimited. We, um, it's yeah, get onto off. it. It is, and it's in the link below. So make sure you click down and get onto that one as well. Now, this includes all of the trade advice that we are going to hit up, and when you get that trade advice in there, you can hit us up privately on Discord. Make sure you get that. And it's not just for the NBA as well. We've got NRL, AFL, NFL, BBL, NBL, and FPL chats all in there. There's even some NBA 2K news. So if you want to get in, make sure you click on the link below, only 25 bucks for the entire year, and we will hook you up with all of our trade advice and our projections and take care of you any which way we need to. Maddie, make sure you get onto it. You've cracked a drink and I love that. Let's crack on with this one. Let's get down to our uh, let's get down to our injury report and news across the NBA. Hey, while you take a sip, let me take us to Atlanta Town, where Sadiq Bay missed Saturday's game with the Warriors with an ankle injury. Jalen Brown is questionable Sunday with back tightness. And while over in Brooklyn, Dennis Smith Jr. missed Saturday due to a sore foot. DFS has missed the last three games with an ankle injury, and we're waiting for an update there. Mate, what's going on over in Charlotte? Brandon Miller's going on over in Charlotte. He's been oh, fantastic. Isn't he? Love him. Uh, but I might buy a Miller jersey, actually. But LaMelo Ball um, is going to miss another game on Sunday. Um, Charlotte has a back-to-back -back Sunday and Monday. Um, so that's, you know, after this and the following day. Um, LaMelo Ball being out. Who do you think benefits there? Um, point guards with uh, Terry Rozier out. I really haven't looked too deep into it, so. Mate, only Cody Martin has seemed to be getting some extra burn there in the point guard spot. Obviously, PJ Washington has been getting burn off the bench. Miles Bridges has become the absolute focal point. But I guess in other news that Gordon Haywood is inching closer to a bit of a return. So if he does make his way back to the court this week, later in the week, I guess Haywood gets a bump as a bit of a facilitator. But we just don't know because he's a trade deadline target as well. Yep. Um. Zach Levine's out four to six months. Um, you know, Caruso. Uh, the Somnu should probably be rostered in standard formats. Um, Patty Williams also out with that foot injury we spoke about a bit earlier on. Um, Kyrie's brain thumb just seems to be lingering. Um, he's now missed six games, um, but they've said he's been close to a return for a little bit, but they're emphasizing that he's close to a return again. Um, look, should play on this next road trip. Um Dante Exum is out with knee soreness, um, looking for a return next week. And Derek Lively has a nasal fracture, um, and he is going to miss the next two games. Um, take us into Detroit and that um, shit fight over there. Yeah, well, the Moose, Big Mike Muscala, is in concussion protocols because being a Moose, you hit your head on a lot of stuff and obviously get injured with large horns. Uh, he is in uh, protocols and is questionable for Sunday over in Golden State. Look, a bit of we there was a resurgent Andrew Wiggins, one would say. People's eyes and ears were going back on, like, oh, let me just check out the box score. Oh, look at Andrew Wiggins doing stuff. He's gone down today with an ankle injury. He did not return. Now, the good news there is the x rays were negative. So we're just waiting for a further update on him. Sarich missed Saturday with an illness. Uh, Moody could be returning very soon. And Chris Paul is being reevaluated in a couple of weeks. Uh, another Aussie bloke. Uh, Jock Landau is questionable for Sunday with a bone bruise in his wrist. We already mentioned Indiana. Look, Tyrese Halliburton, 
Turner, Jalen Smith, who would be a beneficiary of the Turner minutes. And Turner's been on a down. It's probably a buy low window on Miles Turner right now. We've seen this for him before. He goes in his lulls and then he ramps back up generally like most of the best teams and the best players do after the All-Star weekend. Like they have their downtime and they find their form. So this is probably a small buy low window on Miles Turner if you want to try and sneak in there. Uh, Benedict Matherin is also questionable for Sunday. Well then, Let's go talk good injury news for the Los Angeles Clippers. Zubach, Ivaka Zubach, is questionable for Sunday's game to return early from his calf injury, which is really good news for the Clippers. I'm looking forward to seeing him get back out on the court, Matty. That's a couple weeks early, um, and Mick yeah. scooped him up really quickly. Um, I noticed I went to grab him and had him in 20-man. Um, I don't know in, like, 10, 12 teamers, whether I would rush this soon, uh, but definitely in those deeper formats, look, get him in. He still might not even play next game because he is still questionable, but it's a hell of a lot quicker than we expected. What's this, three he weeks was, earlier than we expected? Yeah, he was probably expected back for week, oh, I think week 18, so he was going to be missing 16 or maybe the tail end of 17, but this is a good return to form for him, and yeah, if he's questionable, he might be rolled out there. So obviously this means your uh, Daniel Tice's and your Plum Dog Millionaires are now, if, on upon his return and minutes being lifted, they'll slide even, back down your stream scale quickly. Even even Westbrook a little bit. He seems to like yeah. go out there and just get the, get the rebounds. Um, I'm not saying drop Westbrook, but I do wonder if this will have a negative impact for Zubac. So, uh, for Westbrook, sorry, with Zubac back. Mate, let me do LA because I know like, you should – everything Memphis should always be you. Just look, there's just a jersey involved. Look, uh, we do know that uh, Vando has a foot injury and word out is he could be out for the season. And Gabe Vincent is still at least a month away from returning for the Los Angeles Lakers. Keep your eyes on them, obviously, in week 16 with the trade deadline and see if we can capitalize and make moves based on that one. And let's get to some grit and grind. Mate, everybody is injured. For the Memphis Grizzlies. Everyone. Um, yeah, just honestly, everybody. So, Zaire Williams is out until at least, uh, let's give it a couple games. Um, Johnny Conchar's a game time decision. Jaron Jackson Jr. is out. Tillman's a game time decision. Vince Williams is a game time decision. Victor Oladipo is on our roster now. So, he's out indefinitely, always. Um, Desmond Baines out for what, another month? Um, Yep. Laravia is still a game time decision. Marcus Smart still out another month. Ja Morant's out for the season, and Brandon Clark will be reevaluated in two more weeks. Ooh. Brandon Clark in two weeks. You could, you could get some Brandon Clark he's, minutes this year. No, he's just going to get looked at in two more weeks. He's not going to play. He could, he'll, he, could, he'll, he could come back in a month. Play. He's <laughs> he could come back. Can I tell you that? Like I was looking at Chicago. And, like, this has been a big yep. Chicago show. Levine will probably be on the front cover, to be honest. Biggest Chicago. But, it, could be the biggest, it could be the biggest Chicago episode that anyone's done in fantasy this year for us. Yeah, it's the best thing since Chicago Deep Dish Pizza. But oh. realistically, you have a look at the, um, the injuries and you're like, well, these guys are going to start tanking. Chicago's got 23 wins, so they're going too good. They're, like, in – the absolute yeah. worst spot in the world. Like Memphis are on 18 wins, which isn't fantastic either. But like as soon as anybody kicks a toe on their way to the dinner table at a team breakfast, they're going to be sat at the moment because we're just going to find a way to tank and try and get, you know, maybe a lottery pick, maybe a top 14 pick. Um, but yeah, Chicago, when I saw 23 wins, I just thought they were worse than that. Um, they're just so mid. They're so mid. And they were they were worse than that. They were worse. So this was the team we were talking about in the absolute shit fight to start the season. Like, what is this team that we like? And, you know, this is one of, I guess you could say, one of the most iconic franchises in basketball, the Chicago Bulls. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's the Bulls. And we all know why. It's Michael Jordan. But now, somehow, they've managed to climb themselves to a better record than the Atlanta Hawks, who we were kind of higher on at the beginning of the season. They're at 23. So they're in, they're going to make the play in tournament at this point. Brooklyn is teetering on the edges. I don't think Toronto is going to make their way back into it. 
but you got the Nets, do they fight for it? Like they've had such narrow losses that they could very well have another three or four or five wins under their belts and all of a sudden be sitting at eighth, right under like right alongside the Orlando Magic. So yeah, they're they're just so mid. Are the Atlanta Hawks mid? Are the Atlanta Hawks, I know I mean their record says they're mid. Yeah. But do we they're mid, right? I've got more faith. I've got more faith in Atlanta Hawks making a bit of noise in the playoffs than Chicago. Like Chicago just reek of first round loss. It's a dirty smell in Chicago, isn't it? Can, can I tell you that Chicago just got really lucky with Michael Jordan? They've had like one good stretch of basketball, maybe two Ooh. with Derek Rose. Maybe two with maybe, Derek Rose. But... You know what? Derek I Rose, you... Luol Dang, and blokes like that. Like it wasn't it like him, Noah, uh, and Taj, and yeah. Yeah, but, like, it's not like they're, like, they're a historic franchise that have made so much money over their merchandise and everything. And realistically, they've only had one good run of players. Can I say what I I love the Chicago that we could have had when Lonzo Ball signed there with Alex Caruso? When we saw them come out of the gates that season, both fantasy-wise and team-wise, and they were the best team in the NBA to start it. And hasn't that gone just unfortunately and unraveled downhill with injuries and just lack of I, like just the I last st- oh. I still stand by Caruso was signed to sell jerseys. Oh, hundred percent. Like, he was talking last week about going back to the Lakers. <laughs> it's even like, yeah, I, I I often still think about what could have been. And I'm like, Jesus, yeah. do you do you just want to walk back over and next door? Go nuts. They, they'll probably take you back. Um they probably get back down to six mil a year. They will. Uh, look, back over in Miami, we'll get down to Duncan Robinson. He's in concussion protocols, and he's going to miss Sunday's game against the Clips. Uh, Milwaukee, uh, Brook Lopez. Uh, Rocky Lopez missed Saturday's game due to personal reasons. He's going to come back next game, whereas another big man in Minnesota, Rudy Gobert, is questionable for Sunday's game with an ankle injury. Yeah, um, should be noted, Brooke Lopez is still listed at out on Yahoo. Um, just make sure you don't have him, like, hiding or stashing or something in your IL+. Plus. Um, he's due back next game. Make sure you get him back in and get him in because he's having a phenomenal season. Um, it was nothing to do with injury. Um, I don't know what his personal reasons were. Don't really care. Um, he's back <laughs> playing this game, um, and you need to, you know, move him out of your IL and get him in the roster because Yahoo's still at him as out as at 8.33 Australian Eastern Standard Time. So. Yeah, get on him in there. Uh, look, Herb Jones, mate, Trey Murphy, he's been the major beneficiary there with Herbie being in out of the lineup. And Larry Nance has missed the uh, last couple of games with an ankle soreness. Uh, mate, what's happening over in New York? They've been playing pretty good basketball. They just had their nine-game um, streak. Um I suppose okay. derailed by the Lakers today, but hey, they were missing people like OG's missed a heap of games with that inflammation in his elbow. Uh, Julius Randall won't get looked at for another two or three weeks, um, and they're two of their starting five. Um, but yeah, Knicks keep cruising, and um, Jalen Brunson just got the All Star spot. Um, good basketball's good in New York again. How good? Better franchise than yeah. Chicago. I'll tell you that for free. <laughs> franchise of Chicago. And you know who's one of the best franchises in the NBA this season? The OKC Thunder. Jalen Williams, even with him being out, they've been playing well last two games with a sprained ankle. Uh, Isaiah Joe has a sternum contusion. Uh, and Trey Mann is questionable for Sunday with the Raptors due to personal reasons. Uh, look, we've already chatted Joel Embiid over in Philly. Uh, Tobias Harris, does this bloke just need a shitload of chicken soup? Because he was out two games yep. with an illness last week as well. Yeah. I Look, it's... I often think it's good of an organization not to just rush rush people back. I don't know how sick people are, but I don't often get that sick that are missing two or three days of work. Um, but you know what? If he missed a couple games because of it, uh, let him cruise back and let him just be in his normal self when he comes back. Um, but Nick Batum missed Saturday due to that hamstring tightness as well. Um, and they reckon DeAnthony Melton can come back next Monday. He'll be a bit of a watch, maybe even just a straight up ad for me. Yeah, hundred percent. I know that in my league that uh, Ron Ron Meta Alex just picked him up this afternoon uh, straight away, knowing that he's coming back on Monday. 
he was some guy that I had my eye on, maybe, but I've got Ayo Desumu in that league. So I was like, ah, do I need a, another point guard? Probably not, so I passed. But if he is available in your league, he has probably slipped off the radars of <laughs> a lot of guys and been dropped. So this is where you pick him back up and add him back in. Uh, Jeremy Grant is questionable for Sunday with back tightness. Mate, I can't I, – I always fuck this bloke's name up. Um, Sasha Veznikov? Uh, yeah. Sasha Vezinkov um, didn't play Saturday due to a sprained ankle. It's just easy. It just rolls off the tongue, just like old Russia. Vezinkov. Um, Vezinkov. But Sacramento's been healthy, and they've been getting good wins out of that. Um, RJ Barrett's missed the last couple of games in Toronto. Disappointing because I'm an owner, um, but he is questionable for Sunday's game. So pray that RJ Barrett comes back. That's like a team that doesn't go too deep to be completely honest so i've only got 10 players no ir i need rj barrett back for this win um but <laughs> washington um tyce jones and Bilal kulabali are listed as questionable with ankle and back issues um coos bagley and livers are all out and i think a bit of puffs come out of the uh the bagpipes there um whereas yeah coos you can probably will you can definitely hold through this injury. So, a hundred percent. And talking about all of this, we didn't touch on before. So let's talk about this one. We're going to talk about some waiver wire guys to add. Targets acquired. So let's take you through the back-to-backs for the upcoming week. We didn't touch on before. So you did mention earlier on that Charlotte has the back-to-back week 15, Sunday into Monday, with the Clippers and Toronto also having the same. Monday, Tuesday, this week, you've got Brooklyn and the Mavs. And Tuesday, Wednesday, only one team, Miami. Uh, Where are we looking for waiver targets for a back-to-back on Wednesday, Thursday, Matty? On Wednesday, Thursday, you're looking at Cleveland, Detroit, Golden State Warriors, and the Spurs. Um, Yeah, it's hard to look at Cleveland too much, but there's heaps of value in Detroit. Um, Just have a look. It could be anyone at any given time, to be completely honest. With the Wiggins injury and stuff, I wonder if it's time to go back to the watering hole of like somebody like Pod or somebody like that. Just see see where the minutes come from. And, um, of course, the Spurs are there as well. Um, Again, just roll the dice with those guys. They're not even looking to win games. Um, Thursday, Friday, Denver, Lakers, and Milwaukee. Um, I see Malik Beasley on the bench in a lot of leagues at any given time. He can drop 25. Um, Friday, Saturday, uh, pretty good ones. I know that there's 11 games on the Friday, so of course there's going to be a little bit more overlap. But there's only six on the Friday, so this is one that I'll probably look at. Atlanta, Charlotte, Houston, uh, New Orleans, Philly, Toronto, Washington. Um, and have you seen like the the PR stats of um, Cam Whitmore at the moment? Like, Mate, he's I, been... I was gonna... I actually have him in front of me because I was going to say he's – yeah, no, I actually have him right here because I was looking at him as one of my things. He's gone up 18% in the last day on Yahoo Leagues at 28% roster because he was the guy I was going to say that 11 – will you say the Saturday is like that 11 game? Like what are you looking for? If you're needing some more points and some threes and some decent percentages to bump you, Cam Whitmore has been on fire lately. The guy has been – he is – been, is the 20th pick overall for this last draft. And over his last 13 games, he's averaging 15 points, five rebounds, two threes in 21 minutes. Like, that's ridiculous, mate. Today, again, 25, 6, 1 with two steals. Nice to see the peripherals coming in for him. And they do have that back to back as well. So you can actually get three games out of him. He does have a couple game break um, after the Indiana game. So if he's on your wire. And you can make someone's make sure you can stream into him for the games against Toronto and Atlanta. Because we all know that they don't play a lot of defense, especially the Atlanta Hawks. So come that game on Saturday, he will be putting up some points. Yeah, I I like it. Um, Armin Thompson as well has sort of been added, and I think it'll be one or the other most games. Um, but in the last games, it was both. Toronto didn't play any defense. They scored 135 points. Um, and Armin scored 19 and um, Cam scored 25. Um, but, yeah, either one of those guys is probably worth a punt this week, isn't it? 
Yeah, hundred percent. Look, even a Corey Kispert, when we come down to talking about Washington with the injuries that's been happening there, he's come into a lot of relevance playing good minutes, 31 and 27 in his last games. He actually led all scorers with 26 the other night for the Washington Wizards as well. And this is what Corey Kispert can do. He can get hot and he's also guard and forward eligible. So you can look for him, especially in those tighter spots where you have 11 games, but oh, maybe it's a guard spot where you can feel that one on the back end or if it's a forward spot. You can put that one or in the utility spot. Obviously, you can use anything. So that's where Corey Kispert becomes another one. He's gone up 3% to 8% rostered. So in deeper leagues, he's definitely a bit of a stream. And in Toronto, in the same case, I guess Gary Trent Jr. is the only guy there that's kind of yeah. a bit fringy. He's about 38% rostered in Yahoo leagues. He's gone up 7% in the last day, obviously, with that RJ Barrett. Like you said, we hope good things for RJ Barrett. But with the Sunday, Monday back-to-back -back, and then the later back-to-back -back in the week in the four games, that's someone who we can look at for the Toronto Raptors. Has, has Gary Trent Jr. been fringe rosterable his whole career? Yes. Yeah, like he's was in always Toronto. known as a steals guy. And like to be yep. completely honest, he's come in as a steals guy. It's only averaging 0.8 steals for the whole season like it's hard to replicate a ripper season but when you had a look at projections you have to take that into account and he was like going to be the 80th best player this year um he's the 176th best player uh due to those steals getting puffed out so just a little dig from analysts i suppose because you can't replicate steals steals are being in the right spot at the right time yeah it's like one of the i think it's the hardest that in a block shot yeah. are the two hardest things to get, like, per game. It's so, oh, you say that, but Victor Wembe, yeah, but Victor Wembe is, like, 84 foot tall and just needs to stand in front of the fucking yeah. ring. So he can and get, like, like Brooke Lopez this. is always going to do that. Bro Miles Turner has a talent for blocks. I think you can have a talent for blocks. You can't really have a talent for steals. You can be in the right system for steals. 100%. You can get very laney with it and pick it up and pick up the pass. Like, you saw the swarming defense from the Lakers today versus the Knicks. The amount of random picked up passes, like if you're Tory and Prince, he's just getting his limbs everywhere. He was literally in the – his defensive scheme today was I'm going to kick the ball. I'm just going to move my feet around and try and stop the inbound pass. Mm -hmm. He was like one of those dancing little clowns. Like, mm -hmm. And then the, and the man's all over the place in the system. I mean, this is the thing as well. Miles Turner, we think block shots. He's been down on blocks this year. So you've got to be engaged. You've got to have your. You've got to have your time. And when you draft these guys for steals, like, I'm going to get a steal specialist. I'm going to get a steal block specialist. Well, what happens when they don't? But there's guys who continually return it because they have that talent or that physical size or tools, and they engage and do it all the time. Whereas Gary Trent, he's been able to do it now. His steals numbers are up. So two in his last game, one, two. So he's getting the consistency we like for it. But as you said, on the season, he's down. Because there's games where he wasn't getting them for five or six or seven games in a row. And then that's what you have him on your roster for. And then when he's shooting sub three, sub 400 from the floor, why do you own the bloke? You shouldn't. Yeah, 100%. Um, there's a couple of firecrackers I want to talk about too. Uh, just Norm Powell and Benedict Matherin. Mm. No, Benedict Matherin's a game time decision. But he had a couple of games off, went and dropped 30, um, and now he's a game time decision again. Um, I'd back him in to play. Um, I think that he's probably a better pick than a lot of these guys. Maybe a TJ McConnell if um, if Halley's out. Do you just get TJ McConnell for the week in case Halley's out? Because TJ's elite when Halley's out. Yeah, Nemhard. Like the guys, the streaming options left, right, and center. The, the Pacers are one of the deepest teams. Like Nemhard's great. Naismith has been absolutely cooking, and he's gone up, so he's not roster anymore. TJ McConnell is going to get those minutes like he's gone down like he's been added again in yahoo in the past <laughs> i guess what is it like two and a half hours almost three hours since the, the the day clicked over so the fresh trend is that he's been added 1144 times uh, so he's gone he's but he's gone down 15 percent in the last day so obviously he didn't play for three games he was injured you look around what do you get tj mcconnell for well decent percentages assists and steals as well. He is like Gary Trent Jr., but he continues to get steals. He's a great stream for steals, but also for assists. And low turnovers. Like, the guy doesn't cop the ball up much. Do you want a weird flex this week? I'm going to one. win 
I'm going to win a league this week and I've scored like 250 less points than them. That is a weird flex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've what got are you... like 280 points. They've got like um, they've got like 580 or something already. 540. What's that actually, t- I'm looking. They've got What's 543. That uh, that's in um, that's in one of Carl's leagues. Um, but yeah, I'm just so many points behind, and I'm just like winning the other categories. 290 to 543, and um. Yeah, like I can't see a world where I'm going to lose this week um, just by That's winning huge. some blocks, having better turnovers, having a triple-double in that lead. My percentages are all right. Yeah, like uh, two, uh, you don't need points to win always. Like I know that that's something that everybody always chases, and I just mentioned Benedict Mather and drop 30. Let's add him again. But, um, yeah, this team doesn't score points, and, um, yeah, and I'm fifth at the moment, so. Mate, it's going to take a well-rounded effort. I look at guys like I've, I've rounded. You know, I, I was probably I was looking at my team this week in, in my t- in my personal league, and I've got double. I've got exactly double the turnovers than one bloke. And I usually punt turnovers. Like I, I don't don't I don't lean into them. I just see what I can do with them. But in another league where it's more specialized, I'm winning on turnovers this week. But I've got double the amount of turnovers, and I'm up seven to two. I was like, yeah. geez, and I'm and I'm lucky because. On these guys, when you're scoring a shit ton of points, I'm up. I'm up 300 points on the bloke. Like on points yeah. wise, I'm up. He hit 102 threes. That's insane. I'm, it's a big it, week. And I don't even own Steph. I, it's a big week. I don't even own Steph Curry. Like Dante DiVincenzo <laughs> has since been the three point goat this week. He's already hit 24 of them. Six, four, and nine. And five, like just a massive week from Dante for the league. But you never know where it's going to come from because, and again, this is what we talk about when we talk about the value of streams. And I guess to tie it in a knot before the end of the show, I picked up Dante DiVincenzo because of a trade. And he wasn't the person that was traded. He was there in the vacuum that was left behind by the trade. So when you're doing your research this week, when you're looking, do what Maddie said. Check the depth chart and see who remains. Because if you're sending out a guard and a guard or a guard and a forward and you're getting back a point guard, who steps up? And that's the thing I think, Matty, you've got to really keep your eyes on this week in trade week. Who steps up and, and, and who's the who's the opportunity going to knock for? Like, honestly, Knicks might have – half of the Knicks trade with RJ Barrett might have been that they wanted to play Dante more minutes and they're already playing RJ Barrett all this money. Like, you don't know what's happening in the front office. 100%. And that's where you've just got to keep your eyes on it this week. Keep your eyes locked for all of our content coming up in the lead to the trade deadline. We've got AFL. We've got NRL. We've got all of it coming up your way. And again, huge plug out to our good friend Standard Squeeze. Got to thank them. You can see it all around that one. Make sure you use promo code INSIGHT15 to get 15% off all of your merchandise. We've got those blokes with <laughs> it at the same time. <laughs> INSIGHT15 for 15% off your order. Make sure you have a crack of wheat. Get on there. Get some of your have some merch. Get yourself a forum one. Maddie's got one there. And best believe it, he will be traveling with that next week to Super Bowl weekend when he dials in for a two-minute cameo on the crossover. Okay. After after we had a we had our first one at about seven o'clock last Super Bowl weekend, so I can't wait for you to call me at about eight thirty. So it's just going to be like eight thirty, and I'm just going to dial and and just see what happens. I'm just going to send you a link, and I just want it to be on your messenger for a hot second. And just mention one player that you want to pick up for the week, no matter of what state you're in. I, I actually, I'm actually not sure you can have your phone open in strip clubs, but anyway, I'll try. We'll see what we can do. I hope you don't get kicked out. We'll see you soon, guys. Take care. Make sure you like it and subscribe to all things Inside Fantasy Sports. We'll catch you later.